Hi there, welcome back here on TikTok. Um, today I'm just giving you a quick run through a um, computer basics um, assembly, disassembly type of video showing you the basic components of a computer and how to disassemble it and how to assemble it back again. I have two um, desktops here today, uh, the Novo and the Mesa. So, few differences. But it's all the same. It's different form factors, but uh, the components are still the same. So, where do you start? So, let's start with the, the Lenovo. Over there, you can see the outlets, your power coming from your power supply, the LAN port, your sound ports, your mic, your um, sound output, your USB ports, this one supports USB 3.0 and 2.0 It has a VGA output for display and as well it has a display port Just turn it around This one has two big screws for us just to screw it out with our hands I have loosened it before so no need for a screwdriver This this one just slides back the cover and there we have it Let me just make some light over there So what you see there is the motherboard um, The little battery over there is your CMOS battery that just holds power for your motherboard to save your basic um, Information like time over there you have your disk drive and the hard drive is over there. The fan you see over there, that's the fan that sits on top of the heat sink and that keeps your CPU cool. So just pointing out, out a few components, over there you have your RAM slots. This one is a DDR3, um, supports DDR3 RAM. It has two slots for DDR3 RAMs. Um, it only has one 4 gig RAM unit in it. Over there, you can see the hard drive. It uses a normal hard, a hard disk drive instead of a solid state that has not been updated. So before you start disassembling, make sure that you are using a anti-static um, wrist strap or uh, anti-static um, mat that you disassembling and assembling your computer on this is just to prevent any um, damage to your components so what this one does is just does this little crocodile clip that you just clip onto to the chassis of the the computer just and then you just put this part on your wrist now that we have our anti rust strap, anti static rust strap um, installed, we'll just move it closer there. We'll start with the RAM. So, to remove your RAM, um, there's just two clips on either side of it that you push out, and then you can pull out. Just remember to, to keep it on the side and not touch um, any of the connections or chips on the on an on the board when having a problem with with your computer and it doesn't want to boot or it's giving you um, some beeps error beeps when it's when it's booting um, what you'll usually do is remove the RAM you can also go check out the beeps for your specific board you are using remove the RAM and just make sure that it's installed properly um, another another possible um, troubleshooting method is to remove the, the little battery most of your most of your computers would have a would have a, a little CMOS jumper over there you'll see the jumper and you'll just move it from just show it to you so you'll move it there's three little pins over there 
um, it will usually be on two of the pins and then you'll just move it to the next two pins and then you'll try to boot your computer and it, this, the CMOS will clear your motherboard and then once you're done you just move it back to its original position put back the battery clip it in like that and then boot it up again and see if that solved your problem that usually works for for when you also don't have no display the computer's booting no beeps no error beeps but it's, there's no display let's move to the hard drive so over there you have your little hard drive over it's usually this one is usually installed with four screws but i have previously removed it so there's only two screws in here I'll just make sure that we unplug it. It is uh, SATA cables. Remove the, uh, the next screw and then it just slides up. So there you have your hard drive. Um, this you can just follow the cables to your board you'll see there's another few cables plugged in here at the bottom those usually goes to your to your USB ports on the front and to your your power button and your reset button um, and also if there's a speaker on board you can usually find them plugged into the board via these cables there is little small little labels that you can read on your motherboard to see which ones go to which but i'll suggest before this um disassembling that you always take a picture so you know which cables goes to which and it just makes it a lot easier a lot of the times the cables are not you can only plug it in one spot so you won't um, plug it into the wrong into the wrong port your power supply is in is this device over there which is plugged into the wall socket to supply the computer with with voltage um, from the power supply you'll get all these cables running to your motherboard your dvd drive your hard drive the fan of the computer um, supplying those all with with power a lot of these components run on 12 volts, 3 volts, 5 volts. That's why you have a power supply that supplies the correct voltage to each of these devices. Once you have done that, plugging the fan from the board over there and then unscrewing these. And then let's just do that quick. I didn't unplug it from the board. I'm sure if you go and search for your specific computer, you'd find um, a disassembly video there. Of. Once you have removed your your fan with the heatsink, you'll see your your CPU, your central processing unit. Um, you'll see there's no thermal paste on it when you open yours you'll see a little bit of white paste on it that is just thermal paste this one doesn't have any on because it's not the working computer and i tried to to fix it but i couldn't get it working again um, i'm suspecting the motherboard is faulty um, so this is just for demonstration purposes that i'm using this board now um, so once you have um, your once you have that removed, you can go ahead and just pull the clip to the side and that will release the little bracket that's keeping your central processing unit. Slide it up and over. Oops. I'm going to be crucified. So there you can see 
the CPU. This is a i3 3.6 gigahertz processor. Um, also make sure that you are installing it the proper way. You'll see there's a little mark on the corner demonstrating oh, it's shiny now demonstrating how it should be installed um, and then there's also these little cutouts that should be so the the cpu can all, only be installed one way make sure not to damage any of the the pins at the bottom i'm doing this in a very awkward position the computer should actually lay down on on its side but this is just for camera purposes that I'm keeping it like this so then just push it down to the side and in there we'll install the the fan again you can always clean out your your heat sink and fan at this moment before installing it because it's usually full of dust and that could also cause um, heating issues it has some springs and then um, behind the screw so you just need to push down a little bit for it to be installed so before you install it you will need to reapply some just wipe off the old thermal paste and re reapply some thermal paste You can plug it back in. Make sure you plug it into the proper spot. There we go over there. We can go ahead and install the RAM. Um, for that, make sure that uh, the little slot over there is in the proper spot. Uh, the RAM also just fits in one way. So once you have it, you see I have it installed the wrong way. Um, so once you have it there, in the slot, what I'll do is just press it on the one end and you'll hear a little click and then push it on the other end until you hear the click and you know it's properly installed. It will actually clip itself in. The hard drive like I showed you earlier just slides into its little position over there. Make this, sure there's nothing in your way. Once we have it lined up, we can then install the screws again. Line it up and then just run the screw with your finger. And the screw with your finger. Okay. There we have it. That's your SATA data cable. It only goes in one way. You'll see it has a little L-shaped um, relief so you don't plug it in, in the wrong. Same with the power. You can you can then unplug your your anti-static strap or install your cover again. So this one looks a bit different. This is the the Mesa proficient. Um, this one has some screws at the back. Doesn't have the big screws that you can loosen with your fingers. Uh, I'm not gonna disassemble this one, I'm just gonna show you how it looks inside. Let me just show you the ports on it. It has a 
a little adapter from it doesn't have VGA there's a little adapter in it from TVI to VGA so there's TVI ports there's your LAN port USB 2.0 and your sound ports there's a PCI Wi-Fi adapter and another PCI LAN adapter so this one slides back like that you'll keep it on the side and then just pull back on the cover pick it up and there you have it so like I showed you in the previous one your fan on top of your heat sink that sits on top of your um, CPU this one has four DDR2 RAMs 2 gigs, it adds up to 8 gigs. Um, let me just plug my anti-static kind of strap onto the wall, onto the chassis. There you have your power supply, a DVD, um, DVD writer. Um, so you just unplug the cover in front, pull it off. Um, this just loosens on the side and I'll just push out there's a solid state drive which is much more stable than the hard drive that I showed you in the previous previous machine um, these are older board there's your your CMOS battery there's your PCI cards and that's about it I'll make another video to to show you a little more in detail um, troubleshooting on the boards if we have some faulty computers and I'll also try to make another video of of a laptop disassembly and assembly still the same principle just a little bit more compact. Thanks for watching.